Hi, and welcome to this new video where I'm gonna talk about Drew Seismic, the new software by Just Drew aimed to the calculation of permanent displacements of embedded cantilever retaining walls due to earthquakes. This aspect is of paramount importance for designers working with embedded cantilever retaining walls, as the calculation of the permanent displacements after an earthquake is clearly required by many national standards as well as Eurocodes. In this window, I show you some parts of the Eurocodes where you can see these requirements. In practice, all the available commercial software perform the calculation of earthquake-induced permanent displacements using a pseudostatic approach, in which the earthquake is schematized as a static equivalent force, function of the seismic horizontal coefficient kh. However, schematizing a dynamic action as an earthquake with a simple constant coefficient is not the best solution at all. Indeed, many earthquakes with completely different characteristics could be characterized by the same value of the seismic coefficient. In a pseudostatic approach, such earthquakes are equivalent and produce the same results, as they do not account for fundamental aspects of the earthquake, such as the frequency. Actually, their effects on the wall could be completely different. The problem could be tackled by means of complex numerical techniques, which they are very expensive from a computational point of view, as well as they require constitutive parameters of difficult determination. In this context, we can introduce Drew Seismic, which allows us to forecast the permanent displacements of embedded cantilever retaining walls owing to earthquakes by means of the solution of the motion equation of the structure undergone to a proper distribution of the contact pressure consequent to a given acceleration time history. Specifically, the method calculates the wall displacements when the ground acceleration exceeds a threshold value, which is not kept constant, but it's updated during the earthquake. The employed method of simple application in which requires a limited number of input parameters has been recently published on Geotechnique, the most prestigious among scientific geotechnical journals. Just to understand, it's the same journal where also the methods of Newmark and that of Morgenstern and Price were published, just to mention some. Moreover, this method has been validated by analyzing several well-documented cases, referring to which the method always provided results in good agreement with what actually observed. In this video, we are not going to deal with equations nor theoretical aspects of the method. Rather, I would like to show you some interesting applications of the software. This is the window of Drew Seismic at the opening of a new project. The menu on the left allows us to manage the input of the problem. From this section, we can define the type of analysis to perform. Drew Seismic gives us two options, dynamic and pseudostatic. The dynamic analysis performs the calculation of the permanent displacement of the wall owing to an earthquake, characterized by a given acceleration time history. In other words, it's the application of the method that I was talking about before. However, for the sake of completeness, Drew Seismic can also perform a pseudostatic analysis. In this video, we will focus on the calculation of permanent displacements by means of the dynamic analysis. Specifically, we are going to analyze a real case study, which consists of a diaphragm wall characterized by an excavation height and an embedment depth both equal to 7 meters and 20 centimeters. Besides, the wall thickness equals 0 to 64 meters. It's also possible to consider a different type of wall, such as the sheet pile wall. In this case, we have to input pile diameter and spacing. From this section, we can assign the unit weight of the structural material and the intensity of an eventual uniform load applied on the ground upstream the wall. In the considered case, the diaphragm wall is made up of aluminum and is characterized by unit weight equal to 27 kilonewton over cubic meters. On the contrary, no load is applied. In this section, we have to assign some options of analysis. 
If we choose to perform a dynamic analysis, we have to assign the initial value of the critical acceleration and the gravity acceleration. This latter is set by default. The initial value of the critical acceleration has to be input by the user. This data has to be set to zero for walls of new constructions. On the contrary, it should be assumed equal to the maximum value of acceleration that acted on the wall during the earthquakes that have previously struck the wall. However, lacking more detailed information, assuming a nil value also in the case of existing structures provides results on the safe side. Indeed, the earthquake-induced displacement reduces when the initial critical acceleration increases. The seismic coefficients kh and kv are instead required if we choose to perform a pseudostatic analysis. Before going on, I have to tell you that the wall under examination was subjected to two consecutive earthquakes, indicated as EQ1 and EQ2. For time reasons, in this video I'll show you the analysis of only one earthquake, EQ2. As in this case the system was interested by a previous earthquake, EQ1, the initial value of the critical acceleration is assumed equal to the maximum value of the acceleration recorded during this event. In this case, the value is 1.5 meter over square second. Anyway, the critical acceleration cannot exceed a threshold value corresponding to the limit equilibrium condition. This condition is automatically applied by Drew Seismic, therefore you will not have to calculate by yourself. Instead, this is the section for the stratigraphy. Drew Seismic allows the possibility to define heterogeneous soils, distinguishing between two strata corresponding to the portions of soil above and below the excavation level, respectively. In this case, the wall was built in a homogeneous soil, therefore it's necessary to assign the same characteristics for both layers. Specifically, the soil unit weight is 16 and 4 kN per cubic meter, the angle of sharing resistance phi equals 34 degrees, and the soil wall friction angle equals 12 degrees. For the sake of completeness, we can also assign a color. The last input to assign before going on with the analysis is the acceleration time history. This latter can be imported as a text file. By clicking on the button Import, Drew Seismic gives the possibility to upload a file containing only the values of acceleration or both the values of accelerations and times. In the first case, the file to be uploaded should be made up of just one column, whose values define the accelerations. In this case, the user has to specify also the time step. In the second case, the file should be made up of two columns, referring to times and accelerations, respectively. In this example, I have prepared the text file containing all the accelerations. Therefore, I'm gonna use the first option. Specifically, the time step is 0.005 seconds. When you will perform the analysis of your cases, you could use the acceleration time histories of earthquakes recorded in the referring zone. If these data are not available to you, I would suggest you to employ this database, from where you can download an archive of recordings concerning the main earthquakes occurred in the world. The link to access the database is indicated in the comments. At this point, the input stage is completed, and we can perform the analysis from the specific button. Some outputs of the calculation are represented in the window section. Specifically, referring to the considered section, this window shows the deformed wall during the different instants of the considered acceleration time history. As can be observed, the results are updated by hovering over the acceleration time history. Besides the deformed wall, this window also shows the net pressure distribution that the soil exerts on the wall and the position of the center of rotation of the wall. Finally, the depth X defines the portion of soil where the passive resistance has been completely mobilized. 
From the window time history results, it's instead possible to visualize the evolution with time of the main calculation results. For example, the first output reports the evolution with time of the displacement of the top of the wall owing to the earthquake. To perform the verifications required by the national standards or euro codes that I was talking about at the beginning of this video, it's necessary to verify that the value of displacement obtained at the end of the analysis is lower than the admissible value. Besides, if you also have available experimental measurements, such as in the case of a back analysis, Drew Seismic gives also the possibility of comparing the obtained results with the available measurements. To do this, just right click on the chart and choose the option Compare with real results, and then select the path where you saved the measured values. Analogously to the acceleration, also the displacements have to be saved in a text file. The comparison is reported in this window. As we can observe, the results calculated by Drew Seismic are in very good agreement with the measured ones. From this menu, we can select the other graphs to see as output. As an example, in this video I would like to show you also the comparison between the acceleration time history that we gave as input and the critical threshold calculated by the software. This latter is calculated by Drew Seismic on the basis of the instruction defined in the calculation method. As I said before, the critical threshold is updated during the earthquake until the attainment of a maximum value corresponding to the limit equilibrium condition. To this purpose, I would like to point out that Drew Seismic calculates the wall displacements in the time intervals when the acceleration exceeds the critical value. Therefore, lower values of acceleration than those previously recorded do not produce any permanent displacement. This aspect of Drew Seismic is in agreement with the most recent studies on the topic. Finally, from the button report, Drew Seismic generates a file Excel where it sums up the main results of the analysis. At this point, I have showed you all the main aspects of the new software by Just True for the calculation of permanent displacements of embedded cantilever retaining walls due to earthquakes. Anyway, don't hesitate to contact us for any concerning information. In the meantime, I thank you for your attention and I wait for you in the next video. Bye!